use one of my gifts to lead the youth at the church that was here prior. Mm -hmm. And I always thought about it. I never told David that. <laughs> I never told David that about that story. <laughs> but I always thinking about it. I'm like, David, like, that's you. And I, like, and I just kept, and I always thought about it. I'm like, we continually have to die. Right. Amen. Amen. Daily. Amen. Daily. Like, it's, it's a must. Like, the humility we lack. Like, it's insane. Yes. Like, insane. And we're going to continue on. And Saul, this is the ninth chapter, the ninth verse. And Saul I David from that day and forward. And it came to pass on the morrow that the evil spirit from God came upon Saul. Mm. And he prophesied in the midst of the house. Mm. And David played with his hand, as at other times. And there was a javelin in Saul's hand. Mm. And Saul cast a javelin, for he said, I will smite David even to the wall with it. Mm. And David avoided out of his presence twice. And Saul was afraid of David because the Lord was with him. Amen. Amen. And has departed from Saul. My Lord. Therefore Saul removed him from him and made him his captain over a thousand. <laughs> That's conniving. Uh -huh. And he went out and came in before the people. Uh -huh. And David, and what I'm about David, he behaved himself wisely in all his ways and the Lord was still with him wherefore when Saul saw that he behaved himself wisely he was afraid of him even more mm -hmm. but all Israel and Judah loved David because he went out and came in before them and we're going to skip down so sorry it's all right. And while you're getting that, I want to uh, interject something here. David and Jonathan are they they are doing something that Jesus instructs us to do. And in, in the book of Matthew, let's go to the book of Matthew, the twenty-second chapter. And let's start at um, verse number uh, thirty-six. Amen. And so, so they're gonna they're gonna ask Jesus a question, right? In verse thirty-six, he says, "Master, which is the great commandment in the law?" And Jesus said unto him, "Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it that thou shalt love thy neighbor how? As, I As thyself. Self. So when the scripture tells us that, that, that the souls of Jonathan and David were knit, knit. together uh -huh. and he loved uh, uh, David even as his own soul they were fulfilling yes. this commandment amen. Amen. and a commandment that is instructed to us with the Holy Ghost Amen. That these brothers was doing without the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Right? Like, the law is a law all to itself. Amen. Right? Amen. And here's the scripture on uh, this, uh, verse 40. It says, On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Law is a law all to itself. Amen. When you master the love of God and you master brotherly love, you fulfill. Every commandment that was written on the tablets that Moses had before the people of Israel. Amen. Amen. Many people, because we're under grace now, they say, well, we're no longer under the law and we're no longer keeping those things that uh, were in the laws of Moses and we don't uh, keep the Ten Commandments. But when you exercise 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter dealing with law, you fulfill every commandment that was on that tablet. Amen. That's right. Amen. Think about the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments all dealt with loving God and treating your neighbor right. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Am I, am I telling the truth? Yes, yes. Anybody know the Ten Commandments? Uh, What's the first commandment? I should have no other God. Heart, soul, and mind. Jesus just told you. Yeah. And it's told you what the first commandment was, right? Uh, and then, after that, he said, don't make no graven images. That's right. I have no other God. Don't, don't have no false gods. Don't have no other God before me. 
all of that type of stuff. And then he goes on down, and as he starts going down, he starts getting into the loving thy neighbor part. And he starts saying, uh, don't cover your neighbor's ass and, and wife and goods and thou shalt not kill and thou shalt not steal. He goes into all of that type of stuff. And that is an entire uh, uh, law and commandment. But in one word, love, Amen. the entire law hangs upon that. Amen. Amen. If you perfect 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter, y'all listening? Yes, yes. If you perfect 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter, you won't steal from your neighbor. Amen. 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 If you perfect 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter, you won't murder anybody. Amen. Amen. Because you can't love and hate at the same time. No. If you perfect 1 Corinthians 13 chapter, you will love the Lord your God. You won't put any other God before him. If you perfect it. Amen. You won't covet. You won't steal. You won't do any of these things if we perfect 1 Corinthians 13 chapter. Let's get 1 Corinthians 13 chapter. Amen. And, and let's begin to see the things that the scripture tells us that love is. And if we can perfect these things, then we will find a lot, a, a lot, a lot of peace within our hearts, a lot of peace within our homes. Amen. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Amen. Amen. A lot of peace on our jobs. That's right. If because I'm getting ready to show you where a lot of confusion comes in at. That's right. Anytime you see a lot of confusion, you will see why confusion comes. Amen. Where the God is going to reveal if there's confusion in your house, confusion on your job, confusion in the church, the scripture is going to tell us why it's there. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. But listen to this. First Corinthians, the 13th chapter. And let's, let's, let's begin to talk about what love is. Let's go. Verse 1. Whatever verse talks about what love is. But it says, Charity. Charity. Suffer long. long. And is kind. It is kind. Not. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not. Uh, well, uh, slow down. <laughs> Charity envieth not. Uh -huh. And so while he just gave you uh, a wonderful uh, uh, synopsis on uh, the love of Jonathan and David and what, uh, what it entailed about humility and selflessness, Cain and Abel's relationship missed that. Amen. Amen. It was missing from the relationship between Cain and Abel. Amen. And let, let, let's show something here. Come on. Uh, in, in, the, in the book of Genesis. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the book of Genesis. And, and let's go to the fourth chapter. Amen. Start at verse number one. And let's read down to verse number 10. Amen. Now, now listen to this. And Adam knew Eve his wife. And Adam knew Eve his wife. And she conceived and bare Cain. And she conceived and she bare Cain. Cain is the first child of Adam and Eve. Amen. Uh -huh. He's the oldest. Amen. Something similar to Jonathan yep. being older than David. Yes. So Cain is the eldest son of Adam and Eve. Amen. And now listen to this. And said, and he said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. I have gotten a man from the Lord. Yeah. The name Cain means acquired. Yeah. The acquired one. Which now shows us the response of uh, his mother and his father when he comes. He comes and says, I have gotten a man from the Lord. Now, they could have had a female first. But it is something about having a male child. Amen. Most parents desire to have a son. Amen. Especially fathers. Amen. Fathers know that if I get a man child, my, my legacy and my lineage will continue. Amen. Because the male child will always be the seed bearer. Amen. And, and when he gets married, his last name won't change. Amen. Amen. He'll Amen. keep the family tree going. Amen. See, but if the sisters y'all get married, you take on the name of your husband. The day that he created Eve from uh, Adam's side, the scripture says that the day that he created man, he created they them and called their name Adam. 
Amen. So that's why women take on their husband's name. Amen. When God created them, and then he created them, he called them Adam. Yes, he did. There was a time in our uh, culture, back in the day when my grandmother was growing up, they would call them Mr. and Mrs. James Sims. Yes. Amen. That's Still. Right. <laughs> See, but we done stepped away from that type of, look at y'all quality head, that, 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 that's all foreign to their ears. Still. Still. See, because now we got all you independent women. Come on. You know, I'm independent, and you know, and now you got to the point where pe women don't even change their last names Amen. at all. Amen. And then they come up with that jump where, where you know, well, I'll take his last name, but I'm still keeping my last hyphenate. It wasn't no such stuff as that. Amen. Amen. Who y'all call it? Tell it the truth. It wasn't no such stuff as that. That's right. Because they knew and they understood that there was a subordinate place for the woman. Amen. And now you know you got him, you got him, you got him and well, I'm keeping my last name and I'm going to hyphen it Amen. and take on his. That, it no son, that's that modern day stuff. Amen. 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 That never was going on back in the day. There was Mr. and Mrs. James Sims. Yeah, that's right. And that's the way they, they would identify that they would write checks and do all types of stuff. And that's how they were identified. Amen. So it followed the pattern of the scripture. They, he called their name Adam. Then later on, you find out where she was given the name Eve. Amen. All right? So you see that the woman originally only had three names that she was identified by. And the first one was woman. Woman, that's right. Amen. Adam, after her husband. Uh -huh. Then she was given her own individual name. Amen. Eve. Amen. She was identified with her husband. So they inquired of the Lord for a man child because they know. The lineage and the legacy will continue on with a man child. So he's called the acquired one. Amen. Or his name means acquired. Remember, they never named their children haphazardly. Right. No, no. Amen. They didn't just name their children any old thing they wanted to name it. They, Amen. they named it with precision. Amen. Names in the Hebrew customs have meaning to Amen. them. Amen. All of the names mean something. Amen. And so Cain means acquired. Yes, we got a man from the Lord. Right. Where say what, brother? Again, bear his brother Abel. Now she's going to bear another son. And when she bears this son, she's going to call his name Abel. Amen. Abel means feeble. Amen. Fragile. Cain is the quiet one. Adam is, uh, uh, Abel is. The fragile one. <laughs> the meaning of his name probably had something to do with maybe how he looked when he was born. Right, right. Maybe he wasn't as thick and as 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 big as Cain was, and, and maybe he didn't look as healthy coming out as as Cain did, and so he was a little weak and a little feeble, a little frail, a little fragile. So they named him Abel. And understanding all of this type of stuff will then give you a better understanding of why people think the way that they think when they start thinking. Yeah. Abel is the fragile one. Cain is the quiet one. And what the law says what? And Abel, and Abel was a keeper of sheep. Was a keeper of sheep. But Cain. But listen to this, Cain was a tiller of the ground. Right here, it denotes their strengths and their weaknesses. Amen. Abel is not tilling the ground. It's a strength to till the ground. Amen. So it now shows the statue of Cain. His strength, his ability. But now, you got Abel that's sitting there simply babysitting sitting sheep. Uh-huh. Amen. He's not doing manual labor. Why? He's the fragile one. 